Apple announced the iPhone 14 Pro and all four cameras on the iPhone have been improved. But the main camera is now 48 megapixels. But the big question is, do any of us need 48 megapixels in a phone? I'll talk about each of the four cameras individually. So if you want to skip ahead, you can use the timestamps below. So the main camera upgrade in the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max over the iPhone 13 Pro is definitely the main camera. It's a jump from 12 megapixels to 48 megapixels. But to use all 48 megapixels, is not as simple as you would think. The main camera has a sensor with 48 megapixels in a quad pixel bare design. The sensor is 65% bigger by area compared to the sensor in the iPhone 13 Pro. Because of this increased sensor size and the new computational technology, which they call photonic engine, the main camera has a 2X improvement in low light situation over the iPhone 13 Pro. The pixel size is 2.44 micrometers per quad pixel so each individual pixel is only 1.22 micrometers. The lens is now a 24 millimeter equivalent, which is a little bit wider compared to the iPhone 13 Pro, which was a 26 millimeter equivalent. And the aperture is one over 1.78, which is a little bit worse compared to the iPhone 13 Pro, but the larger sensor size compensates for this. But here is one big important detail about the 48 megapixel sensor in the main camera. If you take normal pictures in JPEG or the high efficiency mode, it will downscale the 48 megapixel image into a 12 megapixel image and that's where it will store it on the camera. So the resolution of the files will be the same on the iPhone 14 Pro as on the iPhone 13 Pro, which is good because the files won't be huge, but we might be lacking the extra detail that's captured by the full 48 megapixels. The only way to get the full 48 megapixels is to shoot in Apple Pro Raw. I've had iPhones over 10 years. I'm not even sure when they introduced Pro Raw, but I never use it on my iPhone. On my Canon cameras, I pretty much only shoot Raw. I never use JPEG. But on the phone, I don't necessarily want to be messing with RAWs all the time. And I saw in one of the live demos that the Pro RAW file at the full 48 megapixels will be about 75 megabytes, and that's huge. So it's a bit of a complex situation. Sometimes I do want the full 48 megapixels, but I don't necessarily want to be messing with RAWs. I think it's unfortunate that the iPhone won't give you an option to shoot 48 megapixel JPEG. Because sometimes when I shoot landscapes or group shots, I would like that little bit of extra detail even if the noise in the picture is a little bit higher. So when I get the phone, I'll compare the output from the 48 megapixel RAW to the 12 megapixel JPEG. I'll see if it makes a big difference for group shots, where I really like to see detail on each of the faces in my group. Because of the high resolution of the 48 megapixel sensor, they also give us a 2X lens selection option. And what this is, is actually a digital crop of the 48 megapixel sensor to 2x so the equivalent focal length will be 48 millimeters and this is actually a great idea a lot of people on the forums were complaining that this is just a digital crop but because of the high megapixel size this should actually give you a better quality than if you were shooting on a 2x lens on the iphone 12 or iphone 11. so here's the math behind it the full sensor is 8,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels so 8,000 by 6,000 is 48 megapixels the size of the sensor is 9.8 millimeters times 7.3 millimeters. If you crop it to the 2x zoom, we'll have an image that's 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. And the sensor area is 4.9 millimeters times 3.6 millimeters. And that's actually a bigger sensor area that's usually on the telephoto lenses. The sensors in the telephoto lenses are usually four times three millimeters. So in summer, if you use the new 2X option, you essentially have a camera that has a 48 millimeter equivalent lens. Then it has a one over 1.78 aperture and the pixel size is 1.22 micrometers, which if taken together, these are better specs than in any of the telephoto cameras in the previous iPhones. Deep Preview has published a really good article about the technology in the iPhones, and I'll link it below. Because of this new 40 megapixel sensor, I'll shoot a little bit differently with the iPhone. On the iPhone 13 Pro and any iPhone before that, I never used the continuous zoom function because in the continuous zoom function, all the camera did was just to crop the image digitally. And in that case, I might as well just take the full image at 1x and then just crop it when I edit the image. But now with the 48 megapixel sensor and the fact that it doesn't store all 48 megapixels, it always downsamples it to the 12 megapixels when you shoot JPEG, it actually makes sense to zoom digitally so then you actually get the actual crop from the 48 megapixel sensor and you still uh, end up with a higher 12 megapixel image. So to clarify, let me give you an example. The 1X camera is 48 megapixels at 24 millimeter equivalent. The 2X camera is 12 megapixels at 48 millimeter equivalent. So the big question is what happens if I want to shoot at let's say 
35 millimeter equivalent. So when I zoom digitally on the iPhone, it should use equivalent area from the 48 megapixel sensor somewhere in between. So let's say 24 megapixels. And that should give me a higher quality than if I took an image at 1x and then I just cropped in editing. The ultrawide camera also got a quality bump. Now it's using a bigger sensor, so it should give you a much better low light uh, performance. And it's also using the photonic engine. So some of the improvements are coming from the hardware from the bigger sensor, and some of the improvements are coming from the better computational technology. Based on the information I found on the web, the telephoto camera did not get any hardware updates. It's still a 77 millimeter coolant with f2.8 uh, aperture. So it's the weakest camera of the three, which is a little bit disappointing because I like to use the telephoto camera a lot for portraits of my kids. So I wish they uh, gave it a little bit of upgrade, but maybe there's a lot of physical limitations and they can't really squeeze it into the phone. We'll probably have to wait for something like the periscope lens, but I don't necessarily need a 10X lens. I just need a really good 3X lens so I could take really nice portraits. But because of the photonic engine, even the telephoto camera should now be a two times better in low light compared to the iPhone 13 Pro. The front camera also got an upgrade, has a high aperture lens, and then for the first time, it's actually using autofocus. I didn't really realize that the previous ones didn't use autofocus, but the pictures were pretty good. I'm looking forward to having a higher quality front camera because sometimes we use it for selfies of the family because it's really hard to frame a selfie with the back camera. And the flash also got an upgrade. Now it's using nine different LEDs and the pattern of these LEDs is changing with what type of focal length you're using. So it should give you a more pleasing pictures. And it also should be brighter. If you'd like to know more about the iPhone 14 camera and how it compares to uh, big cameras like this Canon uh, EOS R with the uh, 24 to 70 millimeter L lens, I suggest you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any of my future videos. I'm planning to compare it to the full frame Canons, also to the crop sensor Canon M50, and also just for fun, I'll compare it to the medium format Fujifilm GFX 50R to see how the 48 megapixels from the iPhone compared to the 50 megapixels from the GFX. I'm Matei, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.